Hello, hello. Hey, I want to show everybody something as we're getting our quorum together here. By the way, nice to see the states that are represented for those of you who are here and uh, doing it live. Michigan representing, Tennessee representing, Wisconsin representing, Missouri representing, Montreal representing, Korea representing, and of course, Pennsylvania representing. So uh, I want to show you some art. I I regard myself as having a deep sense of art appreciation, not a trained eye, but I, I enjoy going to galleries. I own a few pieces that are kind of cool, nothing that's uh, over the top. Um, my wife and I, over the years, have enjoyed going to art auctions, more to watch the characters in the audience than anything else. Uh, Freeman's is a great gallery in Philadelphia where you can do that sort of thing and have a lot of fun. And yeah, over the years, I've also enjoyed going to flea markets and swap meets and so forth, and among other things, looking at the art. So in a nutshell, those are my very limited credentials. I'm going to use my uh, my legal tablet as a backdrop. What do you think of what I'm showing you? A modernist flair, very diverse. I I think. I mean, for what it's worth, I think what I'm showing you is of a is of a trained hand. Here's some more. Are you able to check that out? Okay. Uh, I think that the first image that I'm showing you is a self-portrait. This one. Oh, geez. If you look carefully at the email, I've already given it away, haven't I? The art that I have just shown you can be yours in the fall for seventy-five dollars to $500,000. What's interesting is that there is no fixed market value for this artist, because although this artist is a lifelong artist, I think, I'm not positive about this, but I think that uh, his or her turn to painting is relatively recent. And who is this mystery artist? It would be this individual. Right. In other words, Hunter Biden is the artist. And on the George Burgess gallery page based in uh, New York City and Berlin, it says this, Biden has been a lifelong artist that has devoted his artistic career to both the written word and visual arts. A lawyer by trade who now devotes his life to the creative arts, he brings a myriad of experiences creating powerful and impactful pieces of art. Biden's paintings range from photographic mixed media to abstract works on canvas, yuppo, Y-U-P-O, yuppo paper, I'm not familiar, wood and metal. He incorporates oil, acrylic, ink, and written word within his work to create a distinctly unique experience that have become signature Biden. And then there was a corresponding link for an interview that he had done with uh, Artnet, which I read with um, uh, with great interest. Um, so here's here is the question that is now being raised in the media. Washington Post was the first to really frame the issue. How can how can he pursue his career without creating an ethical dilemma for the White House? I mean, what what is the way in which he ought to be able to sell his paintings that is not going to be a headache for his father. And there's a solution that is um, that has been crafted involving the White House that I think is the complete opposite of what it ought to be. The complete opposite of, of what it ought to be. Look, let me just say a couple of words about Hunter Biden, because you are not watching a Fox segment. I, I am not here to bang the Bidens on ethical matters. I have some concerns, um, but I have a perspective that I want to share on this. I have followed the whole Hunter story from the get-go. And those of you who listen to me 
on radio, and many were disappointed, and many of you will be disappointed to hear me say this. I thought that in the 11th hour of the campaign, when the laptop issue arose and a guy named Bobolinsky came forward, <clears throat> I thought that that issue deserved to be vetted in the media. And when the New York Post ran with it, and I guess the Daily Mail as well, and other outlets uh, totally shunned the story, and in my view, social media censored that story, I thought it was inappropriate. Having followed it closely from that point and previous all the way to the present, and the Daily Mail continued to report on the infamous laptop and to reveal uh, texts and emails between father and son, it's not that I think that the president is ethically compromised. That's not where I'm coming from. I don't, I don't see in this story Joe Biden lining his pocket. I never have. He doesn't strike me as that kind of a guy. He's been in the public domain for a long, long time, and I just don't think that he's morally or ethically challenged. Did you hear me say that? Because I know some of you are going to disregard that statement that I just offered by the mere fact that I'm even talking about this. Oh, my God. When I read the texts and the emails between father and son, <clears throat> I found them heartbreaking. And I, I mean those that came to light within the last 90 days. Because to me, what I saw was a father who had already lost a son, meaning Bo, recently, um, struggling to save another. A guy who was in the depths of addiction and a dad who desperately wanted him to have a reason to live, to pursue a career, and to thrive. I mean, that was what I took away from the story. It just broke my heart to read the exchanges at a time when, when Hunter was really down on his luck and his father as vice president was just trying to throw him a lifeline. So I, I look at those, those, those ethical issues through a whole different lens than, than do the Biden critics. Um, others look at Hunter riding on Air Force, One, uh, Air Force Two uh, to Ukraine or wherever the hell they were going at the time and, and say, because they want to draw the, the most adverse uh, conclusion, well, look at, you know, here's Joe trying to prop him up to do business in Ukraine, ethics be damned. Joe was probably getting a piece of the action. Who, after all, was Big Papa in one of the notes or whatever the, the moniker was that they said was Joe? I don't look at it like that at all. I, I look at it as Joe's got a son that he wants to keep alive, that he's, that he's afraid of overdosing. And if Hunter is now pursuing a career uh, as a lobbyist, if he's pursuing a career, I'll get to this in a moment, as a pain, whatever Hunter is going to do, dad wants him safe and productive. I get it. It'd be my instinct too. So, okay. So Hunter is now a painter. And, and look, I, you know, it's not the sort of thing that I would seek to own, but I think he has a talent. I think he has a talent. I mean, to, to me, this looks like Gerald Scarf kind of stuff, if, if you know who I'm referring to in the album art, <clears throat> or, or some of the hypnosis um, works that made their way into Pink Floyd's uh, production. The question is, how does he do it so that someone doesn't wildly overpay uh, so as to curry favor with the first family. That's the issue. In other words, the art is going on sale in the fall and people are appropriately saying, wait a minute, how, how for a guy who has no market value can he sell paintings for seventy-five dollars to $500,000? So the solution that's been crafted, according to the Washington Post, and you can see this story on my website at smirconish.com, is as follows. White House officials have helped craft an agreement under which purchases of Hunter Biden's artwork, which could be listed at prices as high as $500,000, will be kept confidential even from the artist himself in an attempt to avoid ethical issues that could arise as a presidential family member tries to sell a product with a highly subjective value. Under an arrangement negotiated in recent months, a New York gallery owner is planning to set prices for the art and will withhold all records, including potential bidders and final buyers, 
The owner, George Burgess, has also agreed to reject any offer that he deems suspicious or that comes in over the asking price, according to people familiar with the arrangement. Oh, hold on. This is just fraught with so many problems. First of all, who, who is this guy, George Burgess, and how can we trust his judgment to reject a suspicious offer? How is he going to know if there's if there's a Ukrainian or Chinese or Russian or some foreign um, entity or person who wants to curry favor? How's he going to know if it's suspicious? They'll just hire somebody else as a front person for the transaction. And then here's another interesting thing. You're going to keep the identity of the successful purchaser from Hunter Biden? How? So if I pay $500,000 and I acquire a piece of, of Hunter Biden's art, am I not permitted to display it? Okay, so think about it logically. Now I display it and I have people over to my house or my office. Hey, wow, that's a really cool painting. Who painted that? Oh, I can't tell you. Geez, I see a signature here. There's a there's a big H down at the bottom. I don't even know if he signs his work. That's actually an interesting question. Of course it's going to get out. And and here's the political peril. The political peril and and the the foolishness of this arrangement is that if you try and keep it under wraps, the rumor mill, the conspiracy mill will go crazy. Right? How long until we're told that that it's actually some oligarch close to Putin who bought the No, no. It's it's the the total other response that should carry the day. Full transparency. You, you can't say to Hunter Biden, you don't have a right, you're not entitled to earn a living. Of course he is. I, I want him to be successful. I want him to thrive. Why not? But the way to go about this is that everything's got to be above board. The, the paintings get sold. I mean, it gets sold in an auction. Take a look at who bought them. Um, as much detail as would normally be the case, and then some should be forthcoming. Transparency, not this arrangement where you're you're going to somehow try and keep everything um, on the down low, even from the artist. That'll never work. I, I can't believe I can't believe that the White House, like I can understand a gallery owner, and I don't know this man, and I don't seek to disparage him, but I, I don't know if he has any political sophistication. Um, it would seem to me that his expertise is art. Mine is not. But I know a thing or two about politics. You can't entrust the gallery owner to rule out the suspicious bidders. And secondly, uh, the political aspects of this should have been obvious. This is nothing but a can of worms that's only going to make the situation worse and feed into a Fox narrative about all the you know illicit conduct uh, of both father and son, which I made clear I don't I don't buy into with regard to dad. I just think it's a I think it's a fascinating story. It's really interesting. Uh, love looking at the uh, the art and trying to uh, decide what's going on in it. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to tell everybody. How how do you fashion the arrangement where this man's entitled to earn a living, but it doesn't become an ethical conundrum for not only Hunter, but also for all things Biden? Transparency. Paint your paintings. Go sell your paintings. Let the world watch the whole process as it unfolds. Um, anyway, that's what I wanted to mostly say today. I, I will... Uh, I will find, yeah, I, I, you know what? I will, I will take a look at the comments later because it's too much. It's too much for me to see as they scroll by. The first thing that I see on the screen is the whataboutism. I, I can see several references to Ivanka. Okay, does that make this right? I mean, the Trumps are behind us. We're now talking about this. And I don't think that the answer is simply, well, the Trumps did it. Yeah, the Trumps did do it. The Trumps lined their pockets all the while that Donald was president. Uh, take a look at the, uh, the Trump International Hotel, a block from the White House, Exhibit A. Okay, there. We dealt with that now, right? Can we now have an intelligent conversation about this? It's very unique. It's very interesting. 
and the art makes it uh, a very visual conversation to have. So I'll read all the comments later. Um, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. The other, we've put up some great stuff here on my YouTube channel recently. Please subscribe while you're here on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and ring that little bell, okay? Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on CNN very soon. <clears> Thank <throat>